Well, Malachi 3.6 tells us that I am the Lord God. I change not. Amen? God doesn't change. He's, you know what changes in the world is people. But God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He's always the same. Are you hearing me this morning? But you need to get this. A lot of people feel like God changes. Or when their mood changes, God changes with their mood. God's the same. Whether you feel good or bad or whether you feel up or down, God's always the same. People change, but God does not change. He's always the same. Amen. And what changes a lot in the church is people's theories or opinions. I'm not here to give you my theory or my opinion. My theory and my opinion is just like yours. They both need to be thrown in the garbage. Yes. What I'm here to give you is the word of the living God. Amen. That's what matters. Amen. He's looking for dedication and faithfulness to him. Amen. I told you before, I'll tell you again, my vote don't count. His does. Yes. God's eyes are upon you 24-7. He knows all about you. He knows you better than you know yourself this morning. Amen? We want to please Him. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I want you to know that God, there is no in-between with God. Amen. I said, the Lord God, he said, I change not. He's always the same. There's no in-between with him. Or are you hearing me this morning? You know, I've ran into people over the years, and I know you have. I've been in over 10,000 homes because of the job that I do. And I've seen some interesting people over the years. <laughs> Amen. I have. I've seen those, and you're not trying to be nobody's judge, and we're not, but Jesus did say you would know them by their fruit. That's right. Didn't he? I mean, you're going to know people by their fruit. Yes. And then he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Yes. Amen. And then he did say to judge righteously. Amen. But we're not to be nobody's judge, but that you do know people by their fruit. And over the years, I have seen people that are Christians that go to church. They say they're Christians. To be a Christian means to be Christ-like. <coughs> that live together that we're not married. How many can I tell you that it says in Timothy, in the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and it says forbidding to marry. Yeah. And, the, yeah, and talking to them on surface, it seems like they know God. Can I tell you, the only way to know God is through the Word of God. Yeah. Smith Wigglesworth said one time, I, don't, I cannot understand God the Father by feeling. I cannot understand God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, by feelings. I understand God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, by what the Word of God says about them. They're everything the Word says they are. God does not change, but people change. Yes. God doesn't come down to you, human, uh, hu human's level. They have to rise up to His level. Amen? And there is no in-between with God. I'm here to tell you this morning, either you serve him or you don't serve him. Coming to church on Sunday mornings is good, praise God. But if you leave out of these doors acting like the devil or acting like the world, there is no in-between with God. His vote counts, mine don't. I want the approval of God. I'd rather have the approval of God than I would the world. I'm telling you that God sees your works. He sees your life. He knows more about you than you know about yourself. He is almighty. Amen. There's many times I heard people that had supernatural visitations uh, either called up to heaven or, or, you know, or translated or whatever the case may be. Some of them didn't even have to say a word. 
One of them says it, call, it takes more energy to talk because many times you don't even talk. You can, it's like telepathic, so to speak. More than one person has said that. One person says when you talk, you're wasting more energy. How many you know? And they all said before they asked God a question, some of them said they were, he was answering me what I was thinking. Yeah. God knows more about you than you know about yourself. You cannot hide nothing from him. That's why he is called the Almighty. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? We are little. He is big. We are weak. He is strong. Yeah. He knows everything. Nothing can be hid from him. But I want you to know this morning, don't believe the lie of the enemy. I'm telling you, my dear brother and sister, if you go by your feelings, if you go by your reason, the devil will reason you right into hell. And you don't hear that preached much today, but I'm here to tell you that hell is real, and hell awaits all of those that reject the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's some in the church that believe a false gospel. It's, it's a, there's a message going around. It's a hyper-grace message. They talk about that God is love. Yes, He is. That's what the Bible says. But they don't, their lives never change. Oh, God is love. God is this. Yes, He is. But even the people that are in hell right now, He loves them. There is no hate in God. Jesus loves the people that are in hell. But he didn't send them there. They send themselves there when they reject the Lord Jesus Christ or the gospel of God. You remember Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. There's many people that say, I love Jesus, but they act like the devil. They talk like the devil. When they get out of the church and they get into the world, well, then they are a friend of the world. And the Bible tells me anybody that is a friend of the world is an enemy to God. Yes. Amen. I have, you know, there's young people that go to church, but yet they sleep together without being married. Can I tell you? That the Bible is against that, and it will send you straight to a devil's hell outside of repentance. Yes. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus said, I'll just quote the Lord Jesus Christ. I preach his message, not mine. I never called myself to preach. I didn't just wake up one day and say I was going to be a preacher. When I was born again, it was a part of me like my arm is. I couldn't shake it off. I said, Lord, I was talking to Mother one day. I said, you think the Lord maybe called me to preach? I can't get rid of it. It's always there. Something's just there. Something's just there. I didn't call myself. Are you listening to me? And I have to preach his message. I've got to preach what he gives me. If not, then I've got an answer. Yes. Amen. And you know what I want to hear from him one day? Well done, pal, good and faithful servant. You didn't compromise my word. You stayed with the word of the living God. Instead of going to your left and going to your right, you stayed with the word and you preached the word, uncompromising, entering to the paradise of God. Yes. Out of the joy of the Lord. Amen. That's what I want to hear one day. We got enough preachers and Christians that's in the church that do too much compromise. Amen. Amen. We all need to preach the word of God. Because not only are preachers, but you will give an account as well. Yes. Amen. I love Jesus. And there's no in-between with him. If we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. But my Bible tells me that whoever is born of God does not commit sin. Over there in 1 John, another translation says, does not practice sin. In other words, when you're born of God, you might miss it here and there, but your heart gets your attention. Yes. And you repent. You say, Father, I'm sorry. But yes. someone that just keeps on and on and on without any repentance and keeps on in a lifestyle of ungodliness, they are on the highway to hell, yes. to perdition. <laughs> Jesus said, except like it is in the church. We got a feel-good message going around in the church. Seeker friendly. There is no in-between with God. You're either cold or you're hot. What did he
maybe say he had been with someone that's lukewarm. They come to church, but then are a friend of the world. Then they partake of the world. Then they indulge in sin. Then they are come to church and say, God, I love you, and get around. Listen, my vote don't count. His does. Amen? God says those kind of people, he'll go, <laughs> spew out of his mouth. He said either you're cold or either you're hot. I, God does not accept lukewarm. There's a lot of lukewarmness in the church. A lot of people want to come to church Sunday night. This book, we got the, uh, what's it called? Super Bowl. I like what the white said. He said, oh, I can always tape it. He was here at Super Bowl night. How many people bring it into the church sanctuary? Let's watch the football game. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we know what has them. No, man. Yeah. I've been in the cable industry for 18 years, July. And you would be, wouldn't believe. There's so many people in the church that are so worldly. And Jesus is trying to get their attention. There, I'm telling you, my dear brother and sister, there is no in between. I like that, brother. Quit that. That pleases God. Yes. That pleases God. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. You worshiping Him now with your body. Yes. The Bible says in Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Here comes a word a lot of people don't like to hear. Holy. Yes. God wants us to worship Him with our bodies. But we let our bodies do what it wants to do. You better train this man or it'll train you. Amen? If you don't train your flesh, it'll dominate you. God wants you to crucify it, present it to Him holy. Many people in the church today know nothing about spiritual worship. They think worshiping God is coming to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night singing a few songs and going back home. Amen. No, you're a worship God every day of your life. And he also wants you to present his body to him. See, a sacrifice, I mean, it's not easy sometimes. When God said, I want you to present your body as a living sacrifice, a sacrifice hurts. But if you want to please Jesus, amen, there is no in-between. There is no in-between with him. Lukewarmness in church, in the world, in church, in the world, doesn't work with God. I'm telling you the truth. In the last days in Timothy, it said there's going to be some in the church going to have each years. Yes. They heap to themselves people that they like or, or preachers or other ministers that they like to hear. They don't rub them the wrong way. I mean, Jesus wasn't a, Jesus was popular with the sinner, but with the religious people, he wasn't too popular with. Amen. They wanted to kill him. A lot of people think, oh, I just wish I could be here in Jesus' day, really. Well, he had 12, and then one of them, he said, was a devil. Yeah. And then a lot of them, when he, before, you know, before he rose again from the dead, he said, except you eat of my body and drink of my blood. Well, some of them heard that, they left. Yeah. Didn't they? Didn't. They couldn't understand. And there's some that thought he was a madman. How many of you know there's people in the world that think preachers that preach the whole counsel of God, they're madmen? Why do they think it? Because we mirror Jesus. We mirror him. Well, there ain't but one I want to mirror. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Yes. I want to mirror Him. I want to be like Him. I want to experience Jesus. That's what I want to, you know. Uh, I had an anointed woman to call me the other day. I was in a meeting in, uh, at, at work. I was in a meeting and I, and I saw a name come up. I thought, wow. And I thought, I, I would like to answer that, but I couldn't. I was in a meeting. I'd rather sit down with anointing men of women of God than any celebrity in Hollywood that yes. fulfills the will of the flesh and the devil. Amen. It's amazing how many people, oh, guess who's coming to town? Do they know Jesus? No, but they're, oh, oh, give me a break. You know who I want to 
see is Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I said, well, I, want, I want to be around annoyed men and women that are vessels and full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's who I want to be around. But it's amazing you hear a Christian say, I want to go to this concert. But we see who dominates you and what's, what's in your heart. Are you hearing me? What am I saying this morning? There's no in between with him. Are you hearing me? There's no in between. I read you while well, I quoted you Malachi 3.6. But what does Hebrew 13 a also tell us? Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3.6. I am the Lord God. I change not. God does not change. What he said here applies. He has not changed what I just read to you in Revelation 3. Amen. Beginning with verse 14, 15, 16. He has not changed. He's still the same God. God requires holiness. He requires dedication to Him. Oh, thank you, Lord. He requires allegiance to Him and Him only, whether it be by life or by death. Yes. Paul said whether it be by life or by death, he was going to magnify his Lord. Amen? Are you faithful to him this morning? He either wants you to be cold or hot. Be hot for Jesus. Yes. Be on fire for him. Blaze for him. Amen? Amen? Because if you're not hot, you're lukewarm. And he doesn't accept lukewarm. And he surely doesn't accept something that's cold. Or you'll hear me this morning. Now, there are many in the Bible that we read through Genesis, through Revelation. You can find those that were cold and how God rebuked them. You can find those that were lukewarm. Let me tell you, Saul started out good. He started out hot. He began to compromise. I want a little glory. I'm going to bring the king back. I want him to look at me. Instead of killing that king like God said, you know why he brought the king back? Look what I did. I, I, I. Instead of giving God the glory. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Saul become lukewarm. He was hot. Now, see, you can start off hot. But are you going to stay in the Word? Saul was hot at one time. But when he began to compromise, he became lukewarm. Then he became cold. How many Christians today? See, it ain't, it's good to start off good, but it's how you finish this. I never will forget. Uh, I went to Kosciuszko, Indian Springs County, you know, years ago. And I heard, I think it was Alton Garrison, if I believe. If I'm not mistaken, it was him. He was preaching one time, and he says, I ain't how you start, it's how you finish. Amen. A lot of people start out good in the Christian walk, but somewhere on down the line, the devil got them. I don't know if it's through hatred or animosity or something somebody said or listened to somebody else's offense. You know, whatever it might be, or they were hurt by, they, they claimed God, but really it was the devil, and then they didn't finish their Christian walk. It ain't how you, well, it's good to start good, so I'm going to say, no, it's good to start good, but you need to finish good. Yes. Amen? And some people just think, well, if I finish good, I mean, if I start off good and God sees all the good I did, then I can slow down a little bit. That ain't how it works. You got to be faithful to the end. Amen? Or some people will be so faithful to God for a few years or whatever, and then they start getting to get comfortable. Well, I've been doing enough for the Lord. And then they backslide. If you ain't further with God than when you first got born again and on fire for Jesus or where, at least where you're at then or advanced, you have backslid. Amen. Period. And you, don't, you, you know your heart. You know if you're right with God or if you're not right with God. I got to preach what it gives me. Amen. Come on. This was on my heart. So what did I do? That's why I was saying, Lord, I said, Phil, give me illumination of mine. I need the Holy Ghost. I need God. I need Jesus Christ to fill me, to be with me, to protect me. And when those that are faithful, those 
that are hot has a, a hedge around them of protection. Amen? Amen. Amen? Look here at Daniel 3. Look at Daniel 3. There's a lot of men. I mean, we talked about Saul. How he was hot, and then he was lukewarm, then he was cold. But think about Joseph. Joseph was hot all the time, even in persecution. When that lady tried to seduce him, he said, how can I do this sin and sin against God? He mentioned God during that. David, yes, he missed it. He committed adultery and murder, but he repented. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. He repented. See, when you sin and you repent, God sees it. But when people say, oh, I'm going to just repent from the sins I did today, and they have intentions to go do the same sins tomorrow. No regret. They just, it's just, it's just words. All it is, it's just words. But Jesus said in Corinthians, godly sorrow lead thee to repentance. It's when you're sorry for that sin. There's some people that believe, man, I just accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And they go out there and they mirror the devil. That's a false gospel. That is totally opposite from the Word of God. They want a real quick fix. Something to forgive them, but yet they don't want to give up anything. Jesus made the sacrifice, so I don't have to sacrifice nothing. Jesus said, unless any man comes after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and yes. follow me. Yes. That's the sacrifice. God has not changed, and God does not accept in between. You're either hot, hot people, or only ones that make it to heaven. It's not my gospel, it's his gospel. Yes. Paul said over there in the first chapter of Galatians, if I or an angel from heaven yes. preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let it be a curse. Yes. There isn't but one gospel. I heard <laughs> I'm friends with him on, on Facebook, Michael, Dr. Michael Yeager. Very powerful man, experiences with him. He's the one that I told you about. He had this experience. All of a sudden, he saw this, this vision of this hope, this H coming toward, toward him. He said this H, the letter H was beautiful. It was radiant. It was bright. It was illuminating. It, and it was coming toward him. And it got bigger and more glory. And he's heard God the Father speak. And God the Father spoke and says, My holy church. God only has one church. That's his holy church. He said that's when he heard God speak. My holy church. Then he saw another H coming. And all of a sudden, it, 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 it looked vile. It looked puke. It looked disgusting. It smelled. It was gross. And it was an H, and it got bigger. And he heard God the Father speak. And he said, he didn't say mine. He said, the heart of church. Yes. There's a church in America. It looks so much in similar to the true church. But when they leave out of the church, they act like the devil, talk like the devil. Amen? Now, I'm not saying we don't miss it as Christians. We might miss it, but we repent of it and yes. get it right. Because we do sometimes live in the flesh too. Amen? Are you hearing me? We do live in the flesh. When we trip up, miss it, we get it right. We get it under the blood real, real quickly. But God knows the heart. God knows if you want to serve Him, if you don't want to serve Him. Every church in McGee, Jackson, Minimum, and all across America should be filled. Oh, thank you, Lord, with His people. But instead, something else had them. I was thinking the loss. I remember one time I was hearing about a man. Excuse me. I heard this from him. Personally. His daughter he raised his children in church. Went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and his church, his daughter was staying with uh, his mother-in-law. Pat was. And so she had a little uh, cold or something, I believe it was, a cold. And the, the mother-in-law told uh, uh, Pat's dad, he was a preacher, and says, will you just go on and I'll leave her here with me and take care of her? And he says, no, I'm not going to do it. Then she'll think it's okay to miss church when she gets a little cold. Come on. Yes. 
He says, let us, let us set the wrong example to her. How many Christian parents set the wrong example to their kids across America? <laughs> Well, we got the sports coming up today, Sunday, and the game fell on today. We can't, we won't be able to make church. That is setting the wrong example. That's right. Oh, their hunting season opened up, fishing season, and I've been waiting to go fishing, even though it is Sunday. I'm going to, uh, you know, they all understand. God understands one thing. You put that first, and you're setting the wrong example to your children. I preach nothing but the gospel. Come on. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, the Lord just reminded me this. Seek ye first. Yes. Seek ye first. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. You know why a lot of things are not added? Because God looks at motives. He looks at the intents of the heart. Yes. You put that before me. You could have did that another day, but instead, or you could have showed the world that no, you're not going to compromise with it. How many Christians in the church around America, in the world, compromise? When God said, for make, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. All right. Yes. All right. As the manner of some is. Where's the preachers at to preach the word of God instead of watering it down? I might hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> Come on. And you have to give an account to God one day. That's right. Amen. Like I said, his low counts, not mine. Amen. I'm here to preach the gospel, whether it's to thousands or one. Yes. I'm going to be the same. Amen. 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 Why? I seek the approval of him. Praise God forever. I love Jesus. Well, that man took his daughter to church with a cold. We got to understand, my dear brother and sister, what kind of examples are we going to teach our children? Oh, thank you, Lord. Praise God. I love you, the Lord. He's right here with me. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. Train him. Train him. Train up a child. Not just when you at home, but when they do wrong, but set the right example tool in life. Yes. Amen? Amen? Because when they're old, they won't depart from it. Yes. Amen? That's a good time for you to say amen. Could you tell me all the times what your dad did? When he was a little boy. He left church one time. Did you leave church? But you didn't do it again, did you? <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Well, we got to set the right example. You won't. Oh, thank you, Lord. God wants you hot. And when you're hot, you're going to set the right example. Amen? Amen. You're there, uh, Daniel. Well, we could talk a lot. We could talk about Daniel, Joseph, David. <laughs> Amen? Josiah. I mean, we could go all the way down to the apostles and talk about Job. We could talk about a lot of them, but we would be here for months. So just real quickly here, I'm going to end it with this. Look at the third chapter of Daniel, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height. I want you to notice something. He made an image of gold. Nebuchadnezzar did. What does the Bible say? We are not to worship anything but the Lord our God. Correct? Yes. Amen? Now look at verse 6 of that same chapter. Verse 6. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. I want you to notice something. He made an image for people to worship. And whoso falleth not down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Look at verse 12. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar in spake. Spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do, 
Do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? If they change the law today, would you change or will you stay with Jesus? If they said, oh, we're fixing you have a chance. We're going to cut your head off or if you denounce him and they're, be, they're being real polite with you. If you just denounce him, you can live, we'll feed you, take you to the shower. But if not, you, we're, we're leading you into this room. And then when you find out what's going on in that room, is fear going to grip you? Did you know the moment that touches your skin, you're out of the body? Amen. You will not feel no pain. It's just the devil's trying to use fear to keep you from dying martyr. Amen? Amen? Friends, you don't have to fear of being martyred. Amen? Praise God. Well, here they are. Verse 15, you know, if they hear all kind of music played, all kinds of music, you fall not down and worship the image which I have made well. In other words, it's well with you. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Now listen to this. I like how they answered this. Verse 17. If it be so, our God whom we serve, they were hot all the time, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But listen to verse 18. But if not, in other words, he says, Lord, we serve him, and we believe he's able to deliver us, but we're telling you this, if he don't, we still ain't serving you. you God. Amen. Yes. I like that. Yes. But you know what? They weren't lukewarm. They were hot. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. A lot of people worship other things, material things. God wants you to put Him first in everything. Is there anything right now that the Lord's maybe bringing to your mind that you might put first before Him? Is there anything? What are you putting before? What consumes you? Do you spend more time thinking about Jesus, the Word, or your talk, your conversations? What do you talk about the most? What do you spend your time the most? Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, their hats, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace that was heated now seven times hotter. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Think about that. You want me to tell you what I see right there? Verse 22. I see that here was men that was escorting God's people. Yeah. And all of a sudden the flame took them because it was trying to break her against his people. Yeah. When you're hot, you have benefits that other Christians don't, but lukewarm and cold Christians don't have. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me this morning? God wants you hot for Him. God wants you burning for Him. I think it was John Wesley, if I'm not mistaken. He would go out into the fields and just start preaching. All of a sudden, the crowds would come. They wouldn't know how come he got so many people just starting off out in the middle of the fields. He, I believe it was him that said, well, I just get out there and start burning, and the people come. Well, he was burning for Jesus. Preaching the gospel, burning for him, and the people came. Amen. Well, verse 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. 
and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and says, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. They burned for Jesus. They were hot. All of a sudden, God stepped in the fire. And where God's at, if you're in the fire where God's at, notice what we're fixing to read. Nothing, not even a hair. Not even their clothes was singed. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now he gets it. You servants of the most... We were talking about that earlier. I believe me and Russell was. I saw somebody in here. I was talking about we serve the most high God before we started preaching this morning. Remember that? The damsel in the 16th chapter of Acts said servants of the most high. There is no God greater than our God. Why be ashamed of him? Why not serve him? He is the living God. He is the almighty God. He is the most high. I serve the same God as they serve. Hallelujah. Look at that. That's wonderful. Hallelujah. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, spake and said, Shabrach, Meshach, and then ago, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shabrach, Meshach, and then ago came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their own bodies. And you know what? They sacrificed their bodies a living sacrifice. That they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Do you have that attitude this morning? That you're not going to serve or worship any god where you're on. There are some people's god that's fishing. Are you hearing me? There's some people's God that's funny. There's some people's God that's sports. I, I'll be honest with you. It's all you hear them talk about. There's some people's God is their hobby. They put before God. All their things are good, but they're oh thank you, Lord. But they're sin when you put them before Him. God has never told no preacher to stop Sunday night service. Or Wednesday night service. I have seen churches that only they have is one day a week. God never has told no preacher that. I don't believe it. You cannot convince me. Are you hearing me? I don't believe it. You can't convince me that God ever spoke to any minister say, I want you to come off this. Oh, thank you. The devil has. The devil wants every minister. I want you to stop Sunday night, Wednesday night, and he really wants to stop every church all the time. You cannot convince me and tell me that the Holy Ghost said stop that service. God is not a lukewarm God. Amen? God is a hot God. Oh, thank you, Lord. And you remember what he said in Hebrews? Our God is a consuming fire. And God wants you to burn for him. And if all Christians all over America, all over the world, if we had just burned for Jesus, we will evangelize the world overnight. Amen? But we got too many of them, according to the fourth chapter of 1 Timothy, departing from the faith. Having itchy ears, heaping to themselves, teachers that don't preach the whole counsel of God. How many in here still love me? Let me see your hand. Yeah. Amen. Let me look. Wait, keep them up. Let me make sure. I don't need to have an altar call. <laughs> Amen. We got to put a little sense of humor in there with someone. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's all stand.